welcome friends in the next session of moocs on computer vision today we'll discuss about digital camera camera is the most important element of computer vision system and it is very essential to learn various fundamental aspects related with the camera like shutter aperture mosaicing technique a to d conversion compression etc so in this session we'll discuss the block diagram of digital camera and we we'll learned some important aspects which are required to understand about digital camera this is the block diagram of digital camera in this section we develop a simple model that accounts for the most important effects such as exposure that is gain and shutter speed non linear mappings samplings aliasings and noise the input to the camera is a light so we have the light all rays are following in the aperture the collection of the rays is called optics and the light will travel through the aperture the blocks optics aperture and shutter they are comprised of into a single block called as camera body the light falls on image sensor and it is picked up by active sensing area and passed to the set of amplifiers out of ccd and cmos sensors nowadays cmos sensors are used the theory related with the light is called as optics the light falls through the aperture aperture is basically a hole or an opening through which the light travels so as you can see in this picture uh here the aperture is shown the effect of aperture it directly corresponds to brightness and darkness of an image if aperture opening is wide as shown in this picture it would allow more light to pass into the camera and that will lead to more number of photons which are captured and that will result in brighter image on the other hand if you see the lower image the aperture is small therefore it would not allow light to pass into the camera and that will result into less number of photons the opening of aperture is very small and therefore the resultant image is not having the brightness as compared to your image number 1 as you can see in this image the effects of aperture if aperture was not wide open then this image will be more inclined towards a dark intensity on the other side if aperture is wide open then this image would be more brighter as compared to previous image aperture being the important concept in digital camera the size of aperture is denoted by f value and it is inversely proportional to the opening of aperture if large aperture size is considered that will result into small f value so generally the values are mentioned into f upon the number small aperture size provides greater f value so as you can see in the following image this is the aperture size of 1.4 the next image is aperture size of 2 if the value is increased the aperture size will decrease the value of f 2.8 the aperture size is still reduced and you can see the last value the aperture size is f by 8 and the smaller aperture is possible aperture and focal length of an optical system they determine the cone angle of a bundle of rays that come to a focus in the image plane wide aperture obviously results in a sharpen image typically the range of aperture size is from f upon 1.4 to f upon 22 so the normal range is f divided by 1.4 to f by 22 f divided by 1.4 
is wide aperture or max aperture and f by 22 is a minimum aperture in the block diagram the next block is a shutter block the shutter speed decides exposure time it directly controls the amount of light reaching to the sensor for static picture low and for dynamic picture or video high shutter speed is desired shutter is actually a cover or a closed window as the shutter gets open the light falls on the image sensor and image is formed on the array or on the image sensor if shutter allows light to pass a bit longer the image would be brighter therefore shutter speed and shutter time are the important parameters the shutter speed is nothing but number of times shutter gets open or closed while shutter time is amount of time it is open or closed there is an equation that more shutter speed gives less shutter time and vice versa professional photographers use the speed of the shutter very intuitively so that they can click very nice photographs so especially whenever you want to detect the fast moving objects then in order to capture every bit of information you need to carry out two things number one you increase the shutter speed and second you decrease the shutter time if you increase the shutter speed and if you reduce the shutter time you can capture more and more details if you see in the following image the image number one is having shutter time of one second and you can see that you have missed all minor details from the waterfall in image number two the shutter time is 1.3 1 by 3 and you are trying to get minor details from the waterfall and if the shutter time is increased if shutter time is decreased to 1 by 200 then you get every minute detail of the waterfall so in image number one shutter time is more we miss the minor details in shutter time two in image number two the shutter time is decreased to one by three and in image number three the shutter time is further reduced to one upon 200 and because of that every detail of the waterfall are captured very nicely the next set of blocks are sensor which is either ccd or cmos gain and adc all these three blocks they are called as sensor chip the chip size is varying from smaller to bigger video and point and shoot cameras have traditionally they have used small chip area typically one fourth inch to half inch sensor while digital slr that is dslr cameras they try to come closer to the traditional size of 35 mm film frame larger chip size is preferable as each sensor cell can be more photosensitive more the chip size more photons are being captured so more is the sensitivity however larger chips are more expensive to produce so there is a trade-off between the two parameters the chip size and the cost before a to d conversion sensed signal is usually boosted by a sense amplifier in video cameras gain on these amplifiers was traditionally controlled by agc logic which would adjust gain value to get good overall exposure in new digital cameras gain adjustment is carried out through iso setting so we have the iso setting related with the gain in the new digital cameras normal range of iso is about 200 to 1600 lower the number 
more light is required more light that is required the more likely a slow shutter speed will have to be used low isos like 100 or 200 they are most often used in bright situation like sunlight the next block is de mosaic de mosaicing technique is used to reconstruct a full color image from the incomplete color samples output from an image sensor many a times it happens that color samples are not reconstructed by the camera so with the help of demosaicing technique all these color samples which are incomplete their colors are reconstructed it is also known as color reconstruction therefore or cfa that is color filter array the technique is more specifically known as cfa interpolation then image is sharpened to provide good output the next block is white balance this vice balance adjust keeps colors in the images as accurate as possible colors accuracy generally affected by the temperature of light for example fluorescent lighting adds a bluish cast to photos whereas the tungsten bulb light it adds a yellowish tinge of photons then one may question that how human eye gets perfect accuracy even during sunlight or in the absence of sunlight human eye generally do not notice this difference in temperature because eyes adjust automatically for it the next block is gamma or curve it is also called as gamma correction it is the name of non-linear operation used to code and decode the luminance or try stimulus values in video or still images it is defined by v out is equal to a into v in raised to gamma where a is a constant v in and v out are input and output values which are non negative and finally the image is compressed by a suitable standard jpeg compression typically achieves 10 as to 1 compression with little perceptible loss in the image quality so that's all for today's session today we have completed the block diagram of digital camera we have seen multiple blocks like aperture iso e mosaicing compression gain etc the camera being a very vital uh, playing role in computer vision system it is very important to understand all the concepts and various definitions associated with the digital camera i hope you have understood this session of digital camera thank you